Just a quick word to say, the Scotland Rugby Podcast is now available every Tuesday. Join me, Andy Burke, and Tom English for everything you need to know about the world of Scottish rugby. Just head to BBC Sounds and subscribe to the Scotland Rugby Podcast. The Scottish Football Podcast. From BBC Radio Scotland. Hello and welcome to the Scottish Football Podcast from BBC Sports Scotland and with me, Liam McLeod. It is Monday the 7th of August 2023. Only a few more weeks of summer left. Where on earth has it gone and where do we complain to about the weather that we've had? But anyway, we get on with it and we're all very excited because the new season is is well underway now, of course, with the League Cup groups and the leagues all starting across the weekend. Remember to subscribe if you can at BBC Sounds. We're back for the new season. bbc.co.uk slash Sports Scotland for all your news whenever you want it. So match day one is done. Plenty to talk about. Joining me to do so is the former Hibernian and Rangers midfielder Kevin Thompson, which is handy given the problems incurred by both those teams at the weekend. Kevin, how are we? Yeah, all good, thanks. Thanks for having me on. Did you enjoy the action at the weekend? Well, just touching on your point about the summer, I've not enjoyed the weather so far. So I'm been atrocious. To We're going to look at the European draws first and foremost, because as we record this, they've, they've just been made for the, the playoff stage of the three competitions. Of course, we know that Celtic are going straight into the groups of the Champions League. Uh, they'll they'll be interested in the draw at the start of September. I think it's the 1st of September that that draw is made. Rangers will obviously be want to be part of that. If they can get past Servette, the Swiss team, the first leg at Ibrox on Wednesday, full coverage across BBC Scotland of that. It will be a rematch with PSV Eindhoven, who they beat in the playoffs last season, or Sturm Graz of Austria. That will be in the playoffs. For uh, Aberdeen, they've been drawn with the Swedes Haken, who they took on a couple of seasons ago, or Zalgiris Vilnius, who they faced back in the 90s, the Lithuanian team. So probably as kind a of draw as Aberdeen could really have expected uh, in Neon today. Uh, if Hearts can beat Rosenborg in their Conference League third qualifying round tie, they will take on the Croatians Dinamo Zagreb or Pauk Salonika of the Greek Super League. And for Hibs, well, what a draw this is. They, of course, take on another Swiss team in Luzerne this week. If they can get over that hurdle, it'll be Aston Villa and the possible return to Easter Road of John McGinn. And we'll start with that one, Kevin, because that's a, a mouth-watering tie if uh, the heavies can get through. And obviously the, the added carrot of a Scottish Cup winning legend going back to Easter Road. Yeah, it'd be nice to see Super John. My phone's not stopped asking for tickets already and I'm trying to halt people in their, in their progress. They think you need to get past the first part first before you get the opportunity to play Villa. So, listen, it'd be nice. It'd be a, a wee bit of fairy tale to see Super back at Easter Road. Um, obviously a good friend of mine, privileged to play alongside them in that young group as I was kind of older player and the, the Uncle T, as a lot of, a lot of them called me. Um, but listen, it's it's business really, isn't it? It's um if Hibs want to have aspirations to to get to the the big European nights back at Easter Road, then these are the type of teams that you need to try and get across. So it's, it's listen, it's going to be no mean feat, it's going to be difficult. But at the same time, off the back of a disappointment result of the weekend, that they need to try and hit the ground running as soon as possible, the high bees. Yeah, they do. And just thinking back to John McGinn's early days at Hibs, of course, a real sliding doors moment. He could have gone over to the States after leaving St. Mirren. He was without a club for a little while there. I think it was Owen Coyle who wanted to take him out there. And of course, he moves to Easter Road and the, the rest is history. Um, another of your old clubs there I mentioned earlier, of course, Rangers uh, taking on Servette, PSV or Sturm Graz, if they can negotiate that tie. Uh, they'll know what to expect from PSV, uh, given what they, they went through last year. Obviously, the squads will be different in both camps, but uh, there won't be too many surprises. Um, and Sturm Graz, who they faced in... In 2000, Max Johnston, of course, just left Motherwell. He's been signed by them. And his dad, Alan, played for Rangers against Sturm Graz when they last met in the Champions League back in 2000. But again, it's a, it's another difficult tie they're going to have to come through. They're going to have to do it the hard way. And that's just the nature of these qualifiers, isn't it? Yeah, to get to the top table, it's not going to be easy. It's just it's just the way it is. As you mentioned, there's, there's so much footage and there's so much data nowadays for, for obviously coaches, for managers to look at. So you will certainly do the due diligence. They'll know exactly what they're coming up against. Listen, Wednesday night won't be easy. Um, I think every time when you when you want to play at the top table is, is always going to be difficult and you need to understand that, especially when you represent a club like Rangers. Everybody wants to beat you, but at the same time, all these teams have got aspirations to get in there as well. So, 
listen, it's not going to be easy. But obviously, same again, a bit the same as the high bees to, to start off with a diff- disappointing result. But come on, it just adds pressure, really. So, um, and I know as a player, when pressure mounts, you can you can sometimes not perform to your your top capability. So it's um, that's what comes along with representing a big club. So it's going to be a difficult challenge for the Rangers boys. Aberdeen will be pretty happy with that draw. They've got guaranteed Conference League football at the the very least, but they'll fancy their chances of going through to the Europa League now. Kevin, I would have thought they they beat Hacken uh, a couple of years ago. So Gidas Vilnius, Lithuanian team. Um, Hacken actually lost to Klaxvik, the Faroese side, in Champions League qualifying. So Aberdeen have got to be pretty content with that draw, don't they? Yeah, I think so. I think I think a lot of maybe European teams will underestimate, you know, just how lively coming over to Scotland, especially for the home legs. Um, you know, if they can get positive results, whether they're at home to start with or whether they're away, it's I think the the home ties for every team will be so important. They either get a lead or or to come back to to the home tie to to potentially have a you know, rocking home support and get right behind them because I think that's so important. And that's an Aberdeen and a massive club. They've, you know, had a really good season under Barry Robson, Steve Agnew, obviously, signed for the long term. So I, I think the, um, to me, Aberdeen should be playing at the top table. They should be, have aspirations to get there. I know the conference is obviously a backup, but they'll, they'll certainly have, um, I'm, I'm sure, one eye on, on making sure that they're in the, the main competition rather than the conference. Yeah, one of their big ambitions is to become one of the top 100 clubs in Europe. And to do that, you need to be in the group stage of these competitions. You need to be winning games in these competitions as well. Uh, and just finally to touch on Hearts there, Kevin, um, they've got a, a difficult tie against Rosenborg to come through. They're not the powerhouse that we've seen in the past. Um, they were kind of a, distantly behind the, the champions Molde last season. They've also been in the shadows of Bode Glimp quite a lot as well domestically. If they can come through that, it's Dinamo Zagreb or Pauk. Uh, so again, it's, it's another example of how difficult it is for teams, and Scottish sides, to to come through. Um, at, at times for Hibs, it's three hurdles for Hearts, it's two, but it's still two pretty tough ones to negotiate. Yeah, isn't it? I, I think the um, I suppose for us as Scottish football fans, when we're looking at how proud our teams are, I, I think all these teams that we've mentioned, um, and I'm glad it was you that mentioned them and not me. Um, <laughs> I, I think they'll certainly not underestimate us, you know, as clubs. Um, I think they'll under, understand that, you know, whether it's Hearts, whether it's Aberdeen, whether it's Hibs, whether it's Rangers, um, whether it's Celtic, when they when they get to play in the Champions League, when that draw finally comes out, I, I don't think anyone at that level would underestimate any of the Scottish teams as well. So I think um, the Jambos will back themselves. Um, I've got a lot of friends, half my family's uh, one side's green, one side's maroon. So um, it'd be nice if obviously both teams could get there. But I think with Hearts starting well, um, I thought it was a, even though St Johnson were always had a difficult um, cup competition, uh, cup competition to start with, I still thought that you know Stevie McLean getting a few signings over the board, and I thought that'd be a difficult afternoon for them in Perth. But they seem to kind of get over that first hurdle really well. So I'm pretty sure the Jambos will, will feel they're in pole position to to try and claim that third spot or get closer to the old firm. So um, I'm, I'm I've got a sneaky feeling the Jambos might have a good season this year. I can see your face when you're saying that. It's a, it's a little bit of regret there. It's a good balance your family's got, to to be fair. Um, listen, we'll we'll look now at the domestic action at the weekend because obviously there were a couple of you know big headlines in particular that came out of it. We'll start with Hibs because it's fresher in the mind. We're recording this on Monday. The game took place on Sunday. I mean, it was a hugely disappointing result for them against St Mirren. Um, but the first half performance in particular, having worked on the game yesterday... I thought was probably just as disappointing as the the full time result. Is that fair? Well, I was at my my academy, so I only got to see some of the footage when I got home. I was I seen the goals obviously, and my kids actually had played on the Sunday at East Mains. They're both at the Hibs Academy, and then they went straight to the game. So they, I think they missed potentially the worst part of the first half. But um, listen, Hibs, when you looked at their opening fixtures, I thought they'd have a good opportunity to to get off to a good start in the campaign. Um, and that's no any um, disrespect to St Mirren because Stephen Robinson and, and Demi O'Carroll have done a brilliant job last year, you know, getting in the top six for the first time in, in many moons. Um, and I thought that this would be a difficult season for them, you know, trying to, well, one, starting at Easter Road, um, but it's obviously a difficult place to go for any team, really. But to go there and win and to be 2 0 up and be as comfortable as they were in the first half and then have the be wobble, but then have the character to bounce back, they'll obviously be delighted the St Mirren camp. But for Lee Johnson and his boys and to make this, the changes that he did, Halfway through the, the for well, what, 28, 29 minutes before he made the double substitution. Um, I think it, it it naturally cries a wee bit of unrest and a wee bit of 
maybe got things wrong or whatever. And obviously that's a it's a problem for Lee Johnson and his staff to try and solve. But it's it's also a a wee bit an alarm bell ringing for for the supporters really because you know he's been there for a period of time now. Lee, the, the, they had the disappointment in the European game, pressure mounts. Listen, it's a massive club to represent. There's a demand there. There's an expectation for the fans. So after getting off to a poor start, ultimately the pressure just builds. I guess the positive that Lee Johnson will take from it, and he did admit he he picked the wrong eleven. At least that's what he thought after the match, looking back at it. And as you say, he took Del Ferrier and Campbell off before the half hour mark. The positive is that they were 2-0 down. They dug themselves out of a hole. And actually, I think I said at the time that uh, when it was at 2-2, it looked like there was only going to be one team was going to win it. You know, Hibs were at that point, they were having their their best spell in the match. They're back on terms, pushing for the winner. And then they get suckered by what was a terrific counter-attack that saw Alex Greaves score the winning goal for St Mirren. But you will have to take the positive in the fact that he did make the changes they did appear to work and they were they got themselves back in a game that they didn't look like getting back into. Yeah, look, I suppose that any defeat, any any setback, you naturally when you're a manager, you have to come in front of the media, you have to front the fans, you have to try and put a spin on it whichever way you think is relevant really at that given moment. But I think the the hard part is, you know, disappointing start to the campaign last year with the Premier Sports Cup, you know, the playing the eligible player. Illeg- ineligible player. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not the easiest word in the world. Um, so, and then obviously, you know, Hearts and Aberdeen both finishing above the high bees last year. We both obviously sacking their managers. Do you know what I mean? So I think the the kind of word on the street and the mood in the camp when it comes to you know my friends that follow the high bees every week, really uh, every week, and they go to the games is that they they, they expect a bit better. Um, so listen, they'll always back the team, they'll always back the club because that's what fans being. But I just think it brings really unwanted early pressure really um, but as you say there has to be positives you know it'd be 2-0 down it does show character he did make changes um, the changes did seem to work albeit I didn't watch the game but the momentum swing certainly certainly changed and, and as you say sucker punch late on you know Alex Greaves scoring a, t- a typical trademark St Mirren goal do you know what I mean playing on the counter attack Stephen Robinson is very very renowned for, for having St Mirren playing like that so the harsh reality for Hibs' perspective is they 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 started the first game of this, the campaign without three points and and obviously a disappointing performance in the first half. So the next part um, when it comes along is that is it needs to be positive or else the pressure just mounts. Massive week for them, isn't it? Just finally on Hibs, they've got the two matches against Luzerne coming up on the two Thursdays, and in the middle of that they go to Motherwell, who've been magnificent under Stuart Kettlewell. It's it's a high pressure week for Lee Johnson, isn't it? It is, isn't it? The hard part is that the that you think of the Jambos have been exposed to obviously the, the Thursday night games last year and, and people were saying oh it was maybe detrimental to their league campaign, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But if you if you want to have aspirations as a club be doing that, you need to try and manipulate your budget, the squad, you need to try and make sure the squad's capable, robust enough to do it. It's exactly the same as what the old firm have to do every year, albeit they've got bigger budgets, they've got more players, etc. But when you whether you're Lee Johnson, whether you're Stephen Naismith or or Frankie McAvoy, you, you you have to have one eye on knowing that the squad's going to get stretched. So Lee Johnson will know that. He'll have prepared for it. Um, and as you mentioned, you know, Motherwell will be no easy game as well. So I, th- I think off the back of the St Mirren game, there's there's an expectation there and there's a, a disgruntlement already within the, the, the kind of fans that they expect to see some sort of positive result. So it's hard to get away, even though it's so early and I know it's so cutthroat. Being a manager, I've been there myself they have to get some sort of positive result out of the next the next seven days or so. Yeah, I, I saw Gordon Strachan, he was talking about Aberdeen players, but he was saying if you don't want to play two high, high pressure matches in a week, go and play for a rubbish club. That's what it's all about, isn't it? Look, another huge club obviously is, is Rangers, Kevin, um, another club you served so well. Um, and, and similarly to, to St Mirren, we don't want to do Kilmarnock a disservice here by by focusing solely on Rangers. It was a fabulous performance by Kelly, particularly in defence, but obviously Rangers losing on the opening day of the league season. The first time that's happened in the top flight since 1998 when they lost at Tynecastle. Um, was that down purely, Kevin, do you think, to starting too many new boys at the same time? I think it was five new signings started the match. I, th- listen, I think you can pick whatever holes you want out of the performance, never done enough, and, and rightly so, given you know massive credit to Kilmarnock, difficult place to go. I always thought Derek McInnes, if he could get through last year, because um, obviously I looked at the Kilmarnock job when I was at Kelly, and I know I knew a lot of the, 
the boys that were signed up in the championship had two year contracts. So I knew, I knew doing my due diligence that the next again season for Derek and his staff would be, It'd be tough. Just get through it. Um, and then he could get to then manipulate more of his budget when players were coming out of contract, etc. I think he's a very good manager, Derek McInnes. Um, he's obviously lost Tony Dock, which which is obviously um, a, a main part of his staff. And um, how we obviously is going to evolve off the back of that. We've been so tight with Doc, and now obviously can he arch not so much arch enemies, but obviously playing against each other and obviously probably fishing in the same bowl as well when it comes to yeah. budget from type of player. So. Um, but I do think he's a very good manager and I think he'll have Kilmarnock going really well this year, you know, in our big club. So I don't think you can take anything away from Kilmarnock, but the harsh reality is for, for a positive for Kilmarnock, it has to be a negative for Rangers, really. And um, if they have aspirations of getting the title back and get it off of a, a really good Celtic team, then the one thing I do know is you need to make sure that you beat the rest. Um, I see a lot of people, a lot of pundits talking about the, the old firm games are really important, but they become irrelevant if you can't beat the rest. And unfortunately for Rangers... New signings or no new signings, new manager, new X, X, Y, or Z. And I, I know for representing the club, all these things are relevant when it comes to the fans. They expect you to win, and that's it. Um, and that is the DNA of the club um, when it comes to Rangers. You know, it's, it's winning trophies, it's winning games, it's, it's being at the, the forefront of that league and, and, and chasing your arch rivals. And unfortunately, um, you know, Celtic getting off to a good start and Rangers not so much. It's a bit the same as the Hybies. It brings unwanted attention quite early on in the season. The harsh reality, Kevin, is that Celtic last season lost just three matches. Rangers have already lost one. They're already playing catch-up. It's, it's so early. I mean, there's 37 games still to play. But when the margins are so fine, it's already a setback, isn't it? Yeah, no, I think that's the key. The, the margins are fine. The, you know, two really good teams, two two teams that finished well above everybody else last year. The gap was quite big um, compared to everyone else. I, th- I think... Aberdeen, I think, you know, your Motherwell, I think your St Mirrens, I think I think everybody will be competitive and give them good games. I don't think it'll be as easy because I think teams are improving, but you could also argue that, you know, the old firm are improving as well and the, there's an expectation to do really well in Europe for the calibre of player you'd like to think. They're trying to trying to stretch the budgets and bring in better players, etc. You know, to have, you know, Brendan back up for, for England and obviously Mick, you know, down in England and been at Rangers before, then moved on to Aston Villa, manager himself at Queen's Park and obviously getting offered the Wolves job, etc. So he probably recruit Michael Beale as a manager for Rangers at that given time was a big coup. But the harsh reality is there's, there's only going to be one of them that's going to be successful. Um, and it is head to head. That's just the way it is. And that's not doing anyone a disservice. But if Hearts or Aberdeen or Hibs or, or St Mirren or Motherwell or Kamara, whoever the team may be that could split the whole firm, listen, i brilliant. Um, statistically, it'll tell you that it doesn't happen very often. Um and, and, and that is just a harsh reality of our game, really, in Scotland. But I think, as you mentioned, you know, you only lose three games and 37 games still to go. It's it's easy for us to sit here as Kenny Pundits and, and, and have an overview and, and, and kind of have hindsight. But one thing I do know is um, second best in Glasgow is, is, is failure, really. So the boys will know that. There's enough that have been there for long enough, your Taverniers, your Golsons, your Ryan Jacks, etc., to to know that the disappointment when it comes, it's heavy. And they'll need to bounce back very, very quickly. And just like Lee Johnson, Michael Beale's got a, a, a big job in his hands to uh, lift the spirits ahead of their Champions League third qualifying round. First leg against Servette on Wednesday. They're at home in the first leg. And I believe the stadium in Geneva is sold out for the second leg next Tuesday. Um, I mean, these games are ginormous for Rangers financially. Um, more than anything else, actually, because you know the Europa League, you would argue, probably suits them better. Um, with regards to progress in the competition, which was exploited horrendously for Rangers last season. But financially, getting into the Champions League is imperative for them, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. And, and I think that the biggest thing is when you all... It's like Hibs and Hearts. And listen, it's not just about Hibs and Hearts. It's not just about Rangers and Celtic. I get that. But at the same time, when you're Rangers and you're chasing Celtic or vice versa when they're selling players for big money or they're recruiting players or or they're winning leagues or they're winning titles or they're playing in the Champions League, the, the gulf becomes bigger and it becomes harder for the team that's in second to catch. I.e. if Hibs are doing really poorly and they keep on going through multiple managers and, and maybe multiple signings and it's not working out and Hearts have got a really strong squad and can just keep on adding to it, the, the challenge becomes harder and harder every single season. And I think Rangers are in that week uh, conundrum at the moment where... Celtic are in front, they've got a good squad, they've just sold Jota, which is obviously he's a wonderful player, massive talent, so to try and replace him, but the good part for Celtic is they're trying to replace him with £25 million in the bank. Um, so at, at any given time, I'm sure Brendan Rodgers with the with the um, 
with the, the the pool that he had for for Celtic trying to recruit him as a manager, the money sitting there when the right player becomes available for them to go and strengthen. I'd like to think now that when you look at Rangers recruitment, you know, getting to Europe and getting to the top table is going to be massively important for for probably the the X factor recruitment that Mick might just have on a wee bit of a special board somewhere that they might have an eye on a a special talent or a player that's maybe a wee bit more out with the budget. And that can be the difference, unfortunately, uh, between winning and losing. And I think that's just a harsh reality where Rangers are at the moment. So I think, as you mentioned, imperative that they make sure that they, they try and get to the top table. So these 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 next couple of games are going to be huge in defining what the season looks like moving forward. Good wins for Hearts and the, the champion Celtic. Um, it was a draw between Livingston and Aberdeen. Obviously, Dundee's return to the top flight was a one-each draw with with mother, well, I watched that Livingston Aberdeen game. It was absolutely horrendous. Won't be watching that one again in a hurry. Uh, St Johnston missed their chances actually against Hearts, but they took theirs uh, to pick up uh, a victory in the opening day. Well, Celtic comfortable winners over Ross County and Kevin. Worryingly, perhaps for the rest, the Celtic were nowhere near their best, yet still comfortably came through against Ross County. Yeah, I only seen the highlights, and the, the Ross County actually had good chances. And um, I know a lot of Celtic. Um, Mums and dads, when they bring the kids to the academy, really, so we always have a bit jovial banter every week. So even mm-hmm. if I've missed the games, and they're quite sure to tell me if the highbies haven't done well, or or if so and so's not done well, and my local Tesco's is full of jambos as well, so they're always running about that <laughs> when I go in. So it's they're torturing uh, you. Always good banter here and there, but <laughs> as you say, it's I think even Brendan say that I always like to, as obviously an aspiration young coach myself, and, and hopefully a manager one day again. I um, always like to listen to, to kind of managers' interviews afterwards and, and how they see the game and how they present and and off good and bad, really. And, and Brendan was kind of quick to say that, you know, it's not going to be perfect on the first day. Um, so it is. It's a shockwave for everybody to still score four goals. And, yeah, concede two. And the goals that they conceded were probably sloppy for their part. Good goals for Ross County, obviously. And Malky will know it was probably a free hit and a difficult one. You probably couldn't have asked for a, a worse opening fixture, to be fair, for, for Ross County. But, um to go and put on a, a reasonable show and, and, and not come off the back of a hiding. But as I mentioned, shockwaves probably for the rest. We Celtic not getting up to full steam yet and probably not having an electric pre-season either and probably not signing any big household names as of yet. It is a worry that they go and obviously stamp with their authority on the league again and, and kick on and then it's up for, up for everybody else to try and chase them, really. Just finally, Kevin, a word on James MacArthur, the former Scotland midfielder, it's called time in his playing career today. Uh, he scored four goals for his national team, 32 caps. He left Crystal Palace at the end of last season, having played more than 250 games in almost a decade there. He was, of course, an FA Cup winner at Wigan and began his career at Hamilton Ackies with that terrific uh, side that the Ackies had when they re-emerged in the top flight, the likes of James McCarthy and Brian Easton and, and others breaking through at around about the same time. Um, He's had a terrific career, hasn't he? And he can, he can now, uh, I don't know what his next steps are going to be, but you'll be able to to take stock and look back at what was a, a really good time as a football player. Yeah, wonderful career, great lad. I never had too many comers together with him, to be honest. With probably the time he was a mainstay in the national team, I was probably on the way down, but um, had been in a couple of camps with him. And obviously when he was at, as you mentioned, James McCarthy, James McCarthy, um, that young Hamilton team that they had, I was at Rangers at the time, so we used to have good ding-dongs on the pitch, um, always really talented um, and always watched their kind of careers when they went down south and and obviously watched them flourish really and go on and have brilliant careers and I know they're highly thought of um, both the Jameses really um, as lads um, and it's, 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 it'll be interesting to see what his next ste- uh, step is because we're having so much experience and, and so many different um, you know, good moments within his career. It'll be interesting to see how he goes and stamps that somewhere else whether it's a coaching career or or where they sees it in Kenny Media or whatever, but um, you know we wish him well. He's, he's um, I know obviously with Scotties and that being involved with women in the national team for a long time, they always spoke really highly of him as an individual as a lad. So um, unfortunately for us old boys, it's the careers always come to an end eventually. <laughs> we can't keep doing it forever, but um, we wish him well, obviously in his in his future because he's a wonderful career and, and and a top top player. Yeah, I, I mean, I remember watching the games when you and Scott Brown, Stephen Whitaker, you boys, you are the youngsters. It's incredible how quickly the time flies by, but there you go. Comes to us all. Kevin, thank you very much. Kevin Thompson joining us on the Scottish Football Podcast today. Full details, incidentally, and, and more information on the European draws at bbc.co.uk slash Scotland. If you missed any of the highlights of the opening weekend of the Premiership season, 
You'll be able to catch them on Sports Scene on the iPlayer right now and keep up to date at the website at any time. We'll have another podcast for you tomorrow. Bye-bye. The Scottish Football Podcast. From BBC Radio Scotland. 